For this project, I took a three-phase approach to the design. The first was to figure out how to make one clock, and then design a panel with 24 of those clocks, and then build and program those clocks to make a digital clock. The design was pretty simple, just a cylinder with two arms nested concentrically within each other, so the motion of each arm could be independently controlled. To control that motion, I went back and forth a lot, but ultimately decided to use servos rather than stepper motors, and mainly because the servos were going to be cheaper than the stepper motors, and I figured that it would be easier to program, uh, and that the hardware to control the motion of those servos would be cheaper as well. Next, I threw together a ring to hold the two arms in place on the clock body, and then jumped over to GrabCAD to grab the models of two servos that I had laying around the house. GrabCAD is a great resource to find CAD models for things you might be looking for. It's all user-generated content, and there's a ton of great stuff you can find on there. For the interface between the servos and the arms, I chose to use gears, and rather than model up my own, I headed over to McMaster Car to find the CAD models for some gears that were close to what I was envisioning. McMaster Car is an online hardware superstore that has bolts, actuators, raw materials, pipes, measuring equipment, basically anything you could be looking for. But a little known secret is that they also have the CAD models for most of the things they sell. So I highly recommend you check both of them and grab CAD out. With the gears in the model, things were looking pretty good, so I shot the parts over to my 3D printer, and a few hours later we had the first set of parts. and see if that fits right into here, All right? And straight away, I can feel that there's a little too much tension on the shorter hour hand. Okay, so we had a little issue there with the storage on my phone filling up, uh, but I got the two motors in there now. Um, and one thing I noticed too is it looks like on the gears, uh, when we were designing these, I forgot to put the splines in here. Um, but that said, it looks like the shaft on these motors is a little bit smaller anyways. Um, so they probably wouldn't have fit on there that well. Uh, maybe one option would be if this fits into this hole here, uh, which is gonna be a no. So we'll need to go back and design that into the CAD. Ultimately, I decided to go back into the CAD and modify the mounts to accept a more standard servo that I could buy in bulk. The original ones I used were left over from a different project and weren't ultimately what I wanted to go with for this. After making a few edits and printing some new parts, it was ready to test again. With the interface looking good, I threw together some code to rotate the servos 180 degrees, and voila, we have motion. Straight away, you could tell the motion is pretty jerky, so need to look at the interface between the gears, as well as the interface between the arms and the hole on the main body. Also, noticed that the arms weren't moving back and forth a full 360 degrees, and this just means that the 
ratio between the gears on the arms and the larger gears on the servos needs to be adjusted. Okay, taking a look at the back of the unit, we could see that both gears are moving pretty smoothly on the servos, um, but it does look like there's a little bit of flex and kind of lock up on the two shafts. Uh, it might be kind of hard to see on the camera, but it does look like that might be due to the shafts flexing back and forth a little bit. We could see there that there's quite a bit of flex in that guy. And that should be able to be fixed by just bringing up the collar right there down below all the way up to the bottom of that first gear. And also by increasing the diameter of the minute hand shaft that rides in the center of the hour hand shaft. All right, so I totally think this is a success. We got the clock hands moving back and forth independently. There's a little bit of slop that needs to be cleaned up in the design of the two shafts and the gears, but all in all, everything is working out pretty well. Now the next steps, we just need to take this design and multiply it by 24. Unfortunately, I lost the cool time-lapse footage of making the panel, but the approach was pretty simple. I started with a three-quarter inch poplar board cut to size and added a quarter inch radius to the edges with a router. Then using a level as a straight edge and a square, we marked the positions that each hole needed to be on the board and used an eighth inch drill bit as a pilot hole with a three and a half inch hole saw to make each hole. A bit later we had a board with 24 holes in it, however the hole saw tore up the edges a little bit so we had to go in and sand each hole. Next it was time to paint the panel and I opted to use an all-in-one polyurethane and stain from Barathane in a mahogany finish. While that was drying it was time to go ahead and get started assembling some clocks. I was up against a deadline for this so I printed the parts using a pretty fast speed profile and that resulted in me having to drill out the center of each hand as well as sand the exterior features of each hand so that the gears would fit into the clocks. Along with that I also printed the clock bodies in a high speed and had to drill out the center bores of those as well. After adding some lube, I was able to install the shafts and glue the collar and gear into place and install the motors. Lastly, the larger gears were screwed to the servos and the final small gear was glued into place. We finally got all of the 24 clock bodies assembled. Uh, it was definitely much more painstaking than I thought it was going to be. All told, we probably spent about 8 to 10 hours just assembling those guys and putting the screws and all the servos in there. I think they came out really nice and they're going to look uh, pretty nice on the clock. But just the, the sheer amount of work it took, I definitely uh, underestimated a bit what I thought that was going to take. Now that we have them all together, I'm really excited to go mount them to the board to see what the finished clock is going to look like. Returning to the dried board, we did need to clean up a little bit of excess stain, but all in all, I was really happy with how this finish turned out. I used a 3D printed jig as a guide for the mounting holes because I didn't want to measure and mark each hole. To make sure I didn't accidentally drill through the front of the panel, I placed an o-ring on the drill bit as a depth marker before drilling the holes. So we just got the board put together that will mount all of the clock bodies to. 
Um, really happy with how this came out on the front end. I know, you know, I wanted more of a, a red finish, um, but I think the mahogany stain with the polyurethane primer really turned out quite nice. Um, there's definitely a few areas where, you know, you could see we did that little bit of sanding and it uh, didn't quite get as dark as the rest of it, but I really think that adds a, a little bit of character there. Um, there's also one area where we got a little ding um, where I dropped the the hole saw by accident or it came attached from the drill. But overall, pretty happy with how this is looking. Um, got all the holes drilled with this uh, handy jig here. And I think we're about ready to mount all the clock bodies to it so we could see what the front of the clock is going to look like. Unfortunately, again, we lost that cool time-lapse footage, but just imagine this process happening 24 times. All right, guys, so we got all of the servo bodies mounted to the board. Uh, I haven't actually seen the other side yet. I figured we could do it together. So let's go ahead and flip this over and see what it looks like. Oh man, I am super happy with how this looks. The contrast with the red and the black backgrounds of the clocks is near perfect. The depth too, I really like this, the, the depth perception that it gives off having these uh, clocks a little bit deeper than I believe the other design was. I think we probably could have afforded to have the hands stick out a little bit more. But nonetheless, um, you know, looking at it straight down, um, oh, it's, it's truly beautiful. The, the finish came out great. The, the hand color with the bone white uh, matches perfectly with this kind of the lighter tones in the, the wood here and the grain. Um, overall, I mean, the, the aesthetics of this are just, are just superb. Um, so yeah, I think the next step for us here, we're gonna have to calibrate each one of these clocks individually um, for the position. You could tell right now they're a little bit off and they're actually all set to the zero position on the servo because we turned those arms or those gears all the way to the left before we assembled it. So gonna hook them up one by one, define what uh, degree input is actually gonna give us the positions that we want and then we'll just have to write some program uh, and some code to control the whole thing. I needed a way to control 48 servos with one Arduino and I found these fancy 16 channel PWM drivers that can be daisy chained together and control all the servos through two I2C pins on the Arduino. I also added a real time clock module so that way the clock wouldn't need to be reset when it was unplugged. Moving on to the wiring, I tried to be as efficient as possible with the routing and it actually turned out pretty well and wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be. While doing this, I also made sure to note which pin on each module the servos were connected to to make it easier for myself later. For the power and communication lines, I went ahead and just used jumper cables to make it easy for myself to connect to the headers on the modules in the Arduino. With the wiring finished, I wrote a bit of code to test and see if everything was connected properly. I won't cover that in detail here, but head over to my Instructable if you want to know more about how the code was written. Now we're going to officially first test the clock. The uh, first digit over to the left here should be doing first uh, we're going to try a 0, and then a 1, and then a 2. Okay, now we're going to upload the code to the board. So I'm going to go ahead and send a 2, and the 2 should return a 0. Okay, one servo moved. <laughs> uh, let's try a 3. Nothing. How about a 4? No movement. Okay, we're going to have to troubleshoot. Eventually I was able to get the hands to move as expected, but as you can see in this part of the video, the alignment of the hands is definitely not as good as it could be. Earlier in this video I used the word just have to calibrate the hands and write some code, 
And that just ended up being about eight to 10 hours worth of work because each hand had to be calibrated for the three, six, nine, and 12 positions coming in both from the clockwise and counterclockwise direction. So that way each motion could be accounted for. Eventually, after a very long day, I added the calibrations to the code for the clock and it was time to test things out. Okay, so the code for the clock is finished. We did all of our calibration, set the positions for the 3, 6, 9, and 12, uh, and fine-tuned everything so that the digits are mo more closely represent the numbers, or sorry, the positions of the hands more closely represent the numbers that they are supposed to. The code is set to initialize each number uh, because it needs to go in sequential order. So the first one will go through 0 to 2, this second digit will go through 0 to 9, etc. And then it should fall on the digit that it's supposed to. Uh, right now the time is 11.40 a.m. So we should see uh, 11.40 show up when we go ahead and upload this code now. Okay, obviously the not go as planned, so might need to do another take. Okay, so now we're gonna test the clock and see if it works. It turns out one of the symbols in the for loop uh, was set to an equal than and it needed to be a less than or equal than. Uh, so now the time is currently 11.54 and we will be seeing each digit cycles zero to its full max and then to the digit that it's supposed to be. Uh, might be 11.55 now. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload the code and we'll see if it works. And plug in the servos. Okay, <laughs> let's upload the code now. Okay, obviously we need to try this again. <laughs> okay, third time's the charm as they always say. Uh, a few things were wrong. When we were doing the calibration test or the test code of the, uh, you know, the fine tuning, I had set the zero position as the double digit of the last one. So for first one, zero through two, it was set to two, two. Uh, the last one was nine, nine. And that's because uh, the test code doesn't like zero as a serial input. Um, it wants the serial input to be greater than zero. So um, also the servo frequency was off, which is why the positions are all crazy. Uh, that was just something I overlooked. Uh, from one code to the other. So now we're going to upload this new version and everything should work. Uh, the time is currently 12.01, so we should see 1, 2, 0, and 1 at the end here. Fingers crossed. Oh. happening mm -hmm. oh, I think this one is one uh, click off we can fix that we can fix that. That's oh, 1202. There it is. We did it, guys. <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm super stoked. Uh, I mean, it looks pretty good to me. The numbers are a little wonky. Um, definitely not, you know, as precision of a piece as the real clock clock by, by humans by 1982, 1203, right? We got time is changing. You could read it. It's definitely not as, uh, fancy of a movement between the numbers, but overall I think I would definitely call this project a success.